The Nigerian film industry has continued to gain popularity across the continent and on the global stage. Even with its popularity and growth, it is still to be criticized on many fronts, one of which is that it is a quantity-driven industry as opposed to a quality one. Stakeholders have given certain factors for churning out substandard movies. Some have said budget restrictions, weak plots, repetitive dialogue, and the overwhelming lack of public-private partnership, not leaving out government participation. Since 2010, some positive developments have changed the nature of Nollywood. They include an influx of professional filmmakers, the rise in international festival and cinema tours, international premieres, collaborations with multinational companies, pan-Africanism and distribution via multiplexes. In this time, a film's release on VCD, DVD began to happen later in its life, effectively disenfranchising Nollywood's traditional mass-market consumer base. The question I am interested in answering are, are Nollywood filmmakers becoming more specialized in their art? And was it gentrifying? I used the word metaphorically to explore whether Nollywood increased in grandeur, appeal and acceptance amongst Nigeria's upper class. Hence, leading to fast rise in features of skit makers, brand influencers and basically anyone with a little bit of fame. And has this become the domino effect catapulting skit makers and brand influencers into a whole lot of fame? Put your card number here. Oh, really? Oh, yes, my dear. Thank you, yes, sir. Yes, let me send something to you. Oh, I actually think I remember, sir. Eh? Opopo to Mungu. Yeah! Yes, you remember the conference? Yes, I do. <laughs> you will go oh, far. Yes, you will go far, my dear. <laughs> Well, the Nollywood structure has been of concern to many veterans, and one of them is Saeed Balogun. I will appeal to the government to give us structure. Yeah, and the, the government don't have problem. It is we movie makers. They tend to do riots in the state, carrying play card. It is the National Assembly that should give me a structure. Are they trying to make me powerless? Is it a dictatorship style of ruling? They don't know what to do. The question I ask myself at times is, that honorable that is in charge of culture and code that can give me structure, does he know anything about movies? He's just looking for where to be. He doesn't even know. It is one, we have a lot of us that can bring the revolution. About five or six of us in the assemblies, we can scream, we tell them, God damn you, you know what I'm suffering, you know what I'm going through now, so speak my language. But if you tend to put one honorable man there who was elected, who was a probably mechanical engineer or an economist or something who doesn't even know my pain, we can get it right. It is the structure. After the structure, yeah, the investors can now smile because if you invest in they put money on my table, I mean, they want me to put food on my table, put in billions and I'll give you back millions or thousands. Will you come back some other time? No, 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 no. When the government gets it right, the investors, please, if they are coming, I always tell them, please invest in me in what I can pay back. I am the president of the Golden Movie Ambassadors of Nigeria. We believe in restructuring, repositioning, and getting everything right. An ambassador means you can represent your country everywhere. That is where professionalism comes in. A lot of people are just coming in from everywhere. We have more than 50 associations, 31 performing. Da, 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 what are we looking for? Why can't we be one? A professionalism can come in when you have a strong structure that can guide it. New talents are essential for growth and encourage new faces into the industry, but proper training is vital for theater and, of course, film. Training is critical. We we'll need to create a platform that gives everybody the opportunity to be trained. And then also we need to look at also some means of internship on productions. Take people on and guide them, you know, and show them how to uh, do what you do. If we look at theater, theater it's a, itself is a massive training ground for um, talents that will end up even on, on screen. I think training is important, you know, but then a lot of people learn on the job, which is good. But I think where, where we, we, we would get it right is if 
construction houses, you know, also attempts to, to train, give basic training to uh, people that are not necessarily trained that are venturing into the industry. Uh, you have actors, there are people that are good, they are not trained actors, but on their own, like you said, skit makers, they didn't go to anywhere, but their skits have, have so evolved that they have so many people looking forward to see what next they are going to do, you know, and then you see they can hone their skills and use them, you know, but then again, it is a factor of the industry having that capacity to train, you know, having the infrastructure to train. A lot of these people would want to, if the opportunity is there, uh, gain more knowledge on how to, to do film, how to be better actors or producers or things like that, you know, but then we need to have that platform that gives them that opportunity, that's one. And two, uh, production companies also should uh, look at ways of, even it, it, at times some training do not necessarily have to be formal, they could be informal through internships and things like that. And then skit makers also, at times when they, they've made um, so much fame, they are popular, and they feel they have arrived. But no, there are certain basics you still need to learn. You know, at times you should learn also to, to try and hone your skills so that it can be better. That you are popular now does not mean you cannot do better things. Milking that popularity that you have gained now through the skits you do. Which uh, we notice a lot of people don't do. A lot of directors will just um, allow you to do your thing. Uh, I, 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 I've heard of a set where the director just say, okay, read the line, or yeah, do your thing, do your thing, you know. You know, but at times you should be able to tell somebody, this is what I want you to do, this is the way I want it to be. That helps with the quality. The next thing I'll look at is casting. You know, people cast for the wrong reason. It is good to cast with the mind that um, this person is going to draw eyeballs or is popular, hopefully, the person will help with publicity. It is good. But when you look at certain characters and you know that you need somebody to deliver top-notch um, performance and then that character is unique in that way. You know, it's not something you can just cast anybody because of the numbers. And you overlook that fact and you just put someone that cannot deliver on the character because you think the person has got numbers. Then it, that drags the quality of the production. It is not acceptable for popular faces to just go on and start filming without necessary kinds of training. For us in Actors Guild of Nigeria, it's something we totally abhor and we condemn. So you find that sometimes before you catch them, they are finished making the film. So we are gradually working with the census board in Nigeria to see that some of these things are put to a stop. You must have a certain level of qualification. Even if you have graduated from school and you have not done this business before, you still need some kind of a elementary uh, uh, approach where you will be giving some some ideas, instructions, and what to do before joining the Nollywood industry. It's not all about I can act, I cannot act. Sometimes you see these popular people when they come to set to act, they don't know terminologies of the industry. When you tell somebody who is acting and you say the director says cut, he doesn't know or she doesn't know what cut means, you understand. All of these things are the rudiments of the industry that they needed to go through. But because we are in a country where everything goes, people don't seem to follow rules and regulations, but we are gradually closing on them. With the advent of internet, social media, and instant entertainment platforms, many reality TV stars and skit makers have risen to fame. In this part of the world, becoming a top celebrity is either by ad work, persistence, or true reality shows. As we know that the road to fame is a tough one around here, a few of our top Nigerian celebrities credit their prominence to reality shows which have given them the opportunity. One of them is Shei Awulo, who didn't see it as a challenge for the Nollywood to cast popular faces in movies, as long as the directors have a sense of direction and vision they hope to achieve in the movie. Uh, well, I don't see why not. Everybody is entitled to be able to do what it is that they want to do. Only thing is when it becomes constant and if there's a regulatory body involved, if it's a constant thing where they've literally become constant film, you know, and business, they need to be registered. Okay, then they can go and do that. But I believe that everybody should have... I don't see any reason why I would not put who I want to put in my own production when I want to put them in my production. I mean, I see that person to fit the role accordingly, to fit the character, Bible properly. So 
why not I'll bring the person on board? So I don't see anything wrong with it, you know, as such. It just depends on who's creating movie and whose movie it, it is. Sometimes you want a particular kind of thing, but you're not willing to give. You know, give what you take or take what you give, how to speak. If you're going to be professional, be professional to the T. Follow your this thing and not along the line. I want to start using maybe the Bonnie or there's a sentiment of, ah, now help us to make it known. If you start a kind of particular kind of way, go all the way down to the end. Professionalism in the industry, I can't say, varies from, in, uh, from what I say, companies to companies or from different organizations to organizations, how professional they are or their motto or their mod- modus operandum of how they want to handle things. So, you know, that's the thing. My, you know, for me now, I can just have a laid back uh, working environment where I want everybody wearing shorts and t-shirt and being more laid back mm-hmm. as to probably just someone that wants everybody in a tie. And so it just depends on, uh, you know, the modus operandi of that particular organization that is handling the production of whatever movie or, you know, that is handling that particular production for the time being while you are working, you know, if you get what I'm saying. There are regulatory bodies, but do they really carry out their duties? How do they manage professionalism in the Nollywood industry? For us, we have a constitution that we're working with, but we're trying to come up with the memorandum of understanding in the industry, whereby even if you are involved uh, in any show or something where you have been elected as maybe highest winner and all of that, you will need to still pass through one or two trainings and then belong to a group, either as a producer or as an actor, before you are practicing uh, in the industry. Yeah, professionalism, uh, uh, without, without being um, political here, every, every industry needs professionalism. For us in Nollywood, we are grappling with that because the Nollywood industry is the industry that started without entry point and without exit point and it continued to grow without anybody checking it now it has grown beyond bounds that wherever you are coming with discipline it becomes like it's too difficult to instill discipline among practitioners because there were no laid down rules from beginning there were no laid down rules from beginning there were a lot of illiterates there were a lot of people who didn't go to school there were a lot of people who didn't have, didn't see the four walls of uh, any school, but because they, ha- they are talented, they have made it big and they are now in the industry. So it is a, it's a Herculean task at this point. So we're calling on people who have been here before in the industry to so come back and say, look, this thing is getting out of hand. We have to come back to the basis. Let's see where we structure. Every actor, every producer, every director, you must belong to where your people are. Let us begin to see places. We need professionalism. So I don't just do things out of proportion. The Nollywood industry is a growing work in progress, and the Nigerian Film Census Board needs to enforce the parameters that positively influence the creative processes from writing a screen to post-production. Is this body efficiently empowered to ensure professionalism in Nollywood? Well, hope we find answers.